So many of our clients are happy holding down some pretty low mortgage rates that they've secured over these past few years, so much so that even if their current home no longer serves their needs and it makes them unhappy, well, they're kind of torn right now because they don't know the financial implications that could come along with that potential move or even an adjustment to the mortgage if they wanted to do like a refinance to make over their house. So my friends, I ask you, when should you sacrifice quality of life over potential cost as well as your short and long-term financial gains to live in a home that you actually love? And is it better to move or is it better to make over? And also when it comes to a remodel, is it better to refinance or is an equity line of credit better? Gosh, there's just so many unanswered questions, so many unknowns, right? Wrong until now. Having been your go-to guru for all things real estate over these past two decades, we at the Home Team Group, well, we pride ourselves on being educators above all else. That's that expertise that we bring to each transaction, whether it's your first house or your 50th. Because at our family business, well, you're not just business, you're family. And guys, whether you sell in three weeks, three months, or even three years, we're still going to be here whenever you're ready. We are here to be your real estate resource for life. So, real talk. Do you actually need to move? You know, one of my favorite real estate coaches, his name's Tom Ferry, might have heard of him, kind of famous. Um, well, he says that people only move due to those five Ds. That's diamonds, divorce, diplomas, diapers, and death. Ha <laughs> ha. Actually, in Florida, I think that there's a sixth D. It's called downsizing. We do that a lot here. And if any of those Ds, well, if they apply to you, y'all, it's, it's really time to stop speculating and start digging in and really finding that math to make you move. So for those of you who are getting married or you know getting divorced or have a new baby or perhaps lost a family member, maybe graduated to that next level, or are just wanting to simplify and go smaller, for a free no obligation review of your equity position, contact your favorite lender, Home Team Lending, at 833-WE-LOAN-1 today. Or you can apply online at yourfloridaloan.com and you can click on that cute guy named Manny. I heard he's pretty good. <clears throat> Anywho. What if those five D's or six D's rather, what if they don't apply to you? If you don't really need to move, but like God, your current house is just not cutting it, right? Like what's the best thing to do? Because when you weigh the pros and cons of moving versus a home makeover, well, man, it can be a real head scratcher. It doesn't matter if the rates are high or low or anywhere in between, but don't worry. There's actually four basic steps to know which route, which direction that you should take. Step one, go ahead and pinpoint whatever it is that's bugging you about your home. An outdated kitchen or bathroom, guys, can go from kind of basic to super beautiful with really relatively minor renovations. Plus, a kitchen or a bath upgrade, it's not only going to make you love your house, but it's going to totally bring that ROI up. That return on investment is high in a kitchen or a bath remodel. But what if your current home kind of like lacks one of those rooms that you really need? That's going to be a challenge, right? But... I always say everything is figure outable. You can build an addition, you can reconfigure the floor plan, you can even have a detached full on building if you want to, but you definitely have options when you are a homeowner. Just be careful because when it comes to building an accessory dwelling, you definitely need to check with the zoning and permitting department where your home is located first. Also, <clears throat> friendly, Word to the wise here, because I did this. Not all remodeling choices impact that long-term value of your home in a positive way. For example, garage conversions aren't typically popular with buyers, and it can kind of sometimes be harder to sell with them. The specific impact that a renovation is going to have on your particular situation really does depend on a number of factors. So if you've got something in mind, if you're just thinking about something, just want to like troubleshoot, spitball, go ahead and give us a call and we can assess how your planned project is likely to affect the value of your home. You can reach out to your favorite realtors, my team, the home team agents of LPT Realty at 833-4YO-TEAM or go ahead and request evaluation at yourhometeamgroup.com. And if you don't really need to move, but you just realize that, hey, living so close to the airport is kind of loud and I don't like it, or maybe the school district that you're in is not the one that you love, or there's any reason that the actual location alone doesn't work for you anymore, well, that's a no-brainer because location is not something that you change unless you change location. Duh. So now that we've realized what your motivation to make over a move might be, what then is that next step? Well, step two is to answer these questions. How long have you been in your current home? 
How much did you put down on your home when you purchased it? And what is your mortgage payoff or even an estimate of what it is? It's likely that if you've lived in your home for three years or longer here in Florida, you probably have some pretty serious equity in your home. Congratulations. If it's less than three years, there's still some hope. Depending on the amount of your down payment when you purchased, you actually viably could have enough equity to make the move or even make the makeover make sense. Knowing this information is really key for step three. And step three is to reach out to me, your marketing mama for all things real estate, or literally any one of our expert agents on my team. We'll do what's called a comparative market analysis for your home and give you a range of value for your home. Now, <clears throat> I know what you're thinking. You can look at the Zestimate, right? No, no, <clears throat> no. Listen, I, like any other real estate professional, I, we have this love-hate relationship with Zillow, right? But the fact remains, you guys, a computer algorithm, it's just never going to be able to provide an accurate value for your home. It even says it in the fine print. Real estate, by its very nature, is hyper-local, and a nationwide computer algorithm is never going to be even hypersensitive to the features of your particular home to give you a realistic and true market value. So look right here. Yeah, that's his estimate for a home I sold a few months ago. 211.5, I don't think so. We actually sold that home and it appraised at $280,000. That's literally nearly 70 grand, you guys. You can definitely upgrade your kitchen with that kind of cheese, am I right? The point is, when you need to know your home's value, you need to go to a professional expert, period. And that's gonna provide you with an accurate equity position. Equity position is your property's value minus what you currently owe on your mortgage. And that's where step four comes in. Step four is now that you have this idea of your equity position, you just have to understand the cost for each of the different options, right? With straight facts from all components, because here at the Home Team Group, we have real estate sales, lending and title all under one roof. And there's really no need to speculate when you have that bird's eye view, because you got me the marketing mama for all things real estate. Because y'all, I don't do this for practice. I've literally been doing this business since Jesus was a baby. Well, maybe not quite that long, but since I was a baby, basically my entire adult life. And through these past 20 years in the business, we expanded from just real estate sales to also include mortgage and title and, and, and. So we know for a fact, on average, it costs approximately 11.5% of the home's final sale price to sell a house in Florida. That's gonna include the prep to sell, that's gonna include your realtor commissions, and an approximate like seller closing cost and title fee. Knowing that payoff, that's really gonna help us to drill down on your net proceeds. And those net proceeds coupled with, you know, the impact of a homestead portability, and guys, in 2023, that very real possibility of negotiating seller concessions, it's going to impact on that new purchase and how it might be just that tipping point to have you pull that trigger and put your home on the market. And we need more homes on the market, by the way. Now, the cost of renovation, that's a whole different animal. It can vary depending on what you want to do. But obviously, you need to get at least three different estimates up front so you really understand that dollar amount that it's going to cost to achieve that dream home. But you can access those costs by accessing the equity out of your home and doing that through a cash out refinance or a home equity line of credit, which is called a HELOC. So what's the difference between the two? Well, a cash out refinance provides you with one lump sum of money, whereas a HELOC, it's more like a credit card. It provides you with access to your funds over a span of time, usually 10 years, and you can use your money as needed over that period. Now, since a cash out refinance is considered a first mortgage, it does come with really more attractive rates and a less in-depth requirement for approval. Whereas a HELOC, well, they typically take the form of a second mortgage. They're considered riskier to the lender, which means that they're, you know, they're a little bit harder to qualify for than a cash out refinance due to that risk. So you're gonna need a higher credit score for a HELOC as well. Cash out refinances, they also come with fixed rates where HELOCs have a variable interest rate, usually a little bit higher. And that can mean that you might pay more over the life of the loan than you would with a cash out refinance. But when it comes to that kind of upfront cost, a HELOC is definitely the better option because refinancing incurs closing costs while HELOCs typically, they don't have them. But remember, those closing costs, just like that equity, well, it's paid by the equity in your home. Pretty awesome, right? The bottom line is if your home has equity, you can leverage that equity to upgrade your home with a makeover or move one up to a new one. And that way to make the math 
work for you really does depend on much more, much more than whatever the rates are today. Because rates can be refinanced. And <clears throat> remember, those costs can be covered by that equity in your home. So you gotta really weigh the cost of the headache, the hassle, and your own personal time and see if it works for you. There's really not a one size fits all answer, but if you are feeling trapped in a home that doesn't work for you today, and you really haven't even thought about the math to make your next move, well, y'all, let's talk because information is free and it is so, so powerful. So why don't you let your home's equity and my team work for you?